Welcome everybody. Today's exciting lecture is going to be about the trinucleotide repeat disorders. So we're going to cover four main disorders because there's going to be four testable disorders that they love, that they love. So when you hear trinucleotide repeat, I want you to be thinking of four different disorders. Now what is a trinucleotide repeat? Uh, very basically what it is, is you have a nucleotide. So you have a nucleotide. That's going to be an A, a C, a G, or a T. So you have four to choose from. There's going to be tri in the name, so we're thinking about three. So we're going to choose three of these at random. We could do AAA, ACT, GCT, whatever you want. There's 64 possible combinations. That's what makes up our genetic code. So we're going to take a trinucleotide. So uh, like, let's just say C. A G, for example, that's going to be an important one, but I'll cover that later. We're going to take the tr the nucleot trinucleotide C A G and repeat it. S oops, already messed that one up. C A G C A G C A G, and repeat that over and over and over. That is what a trinucleotide repeat is, where you have a normal trinucleotide. A CAG is typically found in the body. However, the disorder is when you abnormally create multiple copies of this trinucleotide. Your body doesn't want CAG a million times. That is bad. And that is going to give you a disease. So we're going to be talking about four different diseases. Now what are those diseases? Uh, we're going to be talking about fragile X syndrome. We're going to be talking about Friedrich's ataxia. Um, I think that's an I before E except after C, something like that, maybe IE. Spelling is not my main point. So we've got fragile X, we've got Friedrich's ataxia. We've also got another one. This is one of those top 10 disorders out of all of the diseases. This is going to be a top 10 disease, and it's going to happen to be a trinucleotide. I would commit this to memory. This is going to be Huntington's. Huntington's, you'll see this over and over. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with myotonic dystrophy. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, myotonic dystrophy. So let's first start off with fragile X syndrome. What are some of the basics? Well, it's going to be a trinucleotide repeat of the CGG. The CGG tri uh, repeat. Now, you do need over 200 of these. So you need 200 plus CGGs in a row, and that'll give you fragile X syndrome. Now, why is this? Well, it's going to be a X-linked disorder. Now, is it X-linked dominant? Is it X-linked recessive? Uh, it's thought to be X-linked dominant. However, it shows mosaicism. So females uh, may have some penetrance, they may not. It, I'm just going to leave it at X-linked because that is definitively what it is. Um, and then maybe say, mosaicism. All right, that says mosaicism. Don't know how to spell it. Not again my strong point. My apologies. So how is fragile X syndrome going to present? Well, you're going to have a mental, uh, mental developmental issue. So you're going to have mental retardation. You may have a form of autism. You're going to have mitral valve prolapse, so cardiac abnormalities. You may see large ears. That is exactly how fragile X may present in the question stem. If they ask, what is the mode of inheritance? Choose X-linked. Uh, is it X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant? I would choose X-linked dominant. However, notice that it doesn't follow the the pro, like the prototypical X-linked dominant. So I'm just going to leave it at X-linked. Um, females may show some of the phenotypical variations, which I already described, the, the clinical presenting symptoms. However, it's really going to be males that are going to be mainly affected. Now, how do you diagnose it? Fragile X syndrome is going to be diagnosed with PCR and with southern blot uh, techniques. So southern blot techniques. Now 
what is what is affected? Well, our it's going to be the fmr gene that is going to have this repeat, the CGG, CGG, CGG repeat. You're going to have over 200 of these in a row. Now, uh, the more you have, the worse off of symptoms you're going to have. Okay. That is the very, very, very basics, the high yield stuff that you probably should know for Fragile X Syndrome. Uh, no, I'm not going to talk about each one of these diseases in detail. I don't think it's that important. However, if you're going to be tested on any of these disorders, I would know that it is a CGG repeat. That is very high yield information. I would also know that it is an X-linked disorder that doesn't present typically as an X-linked dominant, so I'm just going to leave it at X-linked dominant. Your FMR gene is going to be affected, uh, not as important as that CGG. This is what you really should know. Okay, next we're going to move on uh, in our list. Friedrichs ataxia. Friedrichs ataxia. Now, I have a little story to help you remember this. And so let, let me tell you a little story, and then I'll fill in the pieces about what this story means. So you've got this friend, and you're in a fraternity. So you've got a whole bunch of frat brothers together. Um, what do frat brothers like to do? Well, they like to drink. Frat brothers always drink together. And when you get really drunk, you start falling down. You're not really able to m control your movements. You stagger a lot you're going to have kind of like drunken gait syndrome. So you've got this bro, I mean, he's, he's your frat bro, you're drinking a lot, you're falling down, and when you fall down, so he's walking home from the bar one night, falls down on the sidewalk, and when he falls down, he's yelling, gah, gah. So that's your story. You've got a frat brother, he really is drunk, he's kind of drunk walking, he's, he's in a frat, he's your frat brother. And when he's falling down, he's yelling, ga, G-A-A. I don't know what my pen's doing today, but he's yelling, G-A-A. -A. That is going to be your trinucleotide repeat. Now remember in Fragile X, it was a C-G-G trinucleotide repeat. Now we're a G-A-A -A trinucleotide repeat. So this is a very important part. This, and then, so your brother, your drunk frat brother is yelling ga that is going to be part one of the story so i say it's frat brother disease now let's 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 extrapolate a little it is going to be an autosomal recessive inheritance meaning you need two recessive alleles uh, to get this friedrichs ataxia and what you're going to see some of the symptoms Let's change colors here, just keep you on edge. Some of the symptoms that you're going to see, you're going to see falling. This is going to, the falling is going to cause your frat brother to yell ga. You're going to see like areflexia or uh, uncoordinated movements in all four limbs. Areflexia in four limbs. And then also, uh, also note that the mind is not affected. You're still mentally astute. However, it's it's your motor problems that you're having problems with. It's your areflexia. You're also going to see um, kyphosis, kind of like hunchback. Uh, you're going to see kyphoscoliosis. You're also going to see some heart problems as well not as important. It's this falling, this areflexia, it's these motor symptoms. Uh, just remember that mentally you check out. You're okay mentally. So frat brother disease, why do I say frat brother? It's because this uh, this gene, this encodes for the the, the protein Frataxin. Frataxin. Your frat brother gets really drunk, he's going to fall, and he's going to yell ga when he falls. Those are the three biggest falling. Ga. 
Frataxin. This is all dealing with Friedrich's ataxia. So just remember my little story. Um, hopefully that helped a little bit. Friedrich, he's a frat brother. He falls, yells ga. Okay, high yield stuff only. Not gonna go into the rest of the disease. This is this is meant to get you points. This is trinucleotide repeats. Trinucleotide repeats are a big part of board exams. Get those points. I'm only giving you the very highest yield stuff. And speaking of high yield, Huntington's. Hard to get much more high yield than that. There are a few other diseases. Diabetes is high yield too. But Huntington's, when you're talking about genetics, Huntington's is such a good test question material. Why is that? It's because you've got a CAG repeat. Now, I've already given you this example. CAG, this is very important. You're going to see a repeat of CAG on chromosome 4. Chromo 4. Chromosome 4. And what this is going to do, CAG, remember CAG, those trinucleotides? Once you have a trinucleotide codon, it'll encode for an amino acid. What amino acid is it? Glutamine. Hopefully you all passed biochemistry. It's going to be glutamine. You're going to have glutamine, 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 glutamine. You're going to have long, long chains of glutamine. That is not good. That'll give you Huntington's. Now, you'll, you're going to see a, a mode of inheritance. It's going to be autosomal dominant, meaning that if one of your parents has it and the other doesn't, you'll have a 50-50 chance of inheriting it with traditional Mendelian inheritance patterns. Autosomal dominant. So if you get that allele, you will have the disease. You don't have to have two alleles, which is what autosomal recessive is. Autosomal dominant means you'll have the disease if you get that one mutated allele. So Huntington's. If I could choose one word, I would probably say C-A-G. Um, my second word would probably be anticipation. These are high yield words. What is anticipation? It simply means that, uh, let's, let's say you have a dad here, and let's say you have a son, and you have a grandpa. Now they all have this disease. This uh, dominant allele got passed from the grandpa to the dad to the son. The grandpa might have died at age 60. The dad might have died at age 50, so the son will most likely die at around age 40. It's anticipation. This trinucleotide repeat is getting longer. The CAG repeat is extending, and as it extends, it's going to decrease your life expectancy. You're going to see disease onset at an earlier age. That's what anticipation is. And the prototypical disease associated with anticipation is Huntington's. They go hand in hand. It's like a baseball glove in a hand. They go hand in hand. So when you think anticipation, you're going to see the disease at earlier age. Or you may see it increased severity. Anticipation. It's because the CAG repeat is going to be extending. So what do you see? So we have this anticipation when we said we're going to see these symptoms at an earlier age or increased severity. What symptoms are we actually going to see? Well, you're going to see in Huntington's dance. It's going to be a traditional dance. And what it is is you're going to have atrophy of the striatal nuclei, and those striatal nuclei are going to inhibit. So you're losing your inhibiting. So let's say you're driving your car and you go to put on your brakes. Oh wait, your brakes inhibit your car from moving. That's kind of what the brain does, is your striatal nuclei inhibits your movements. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a Huntington's dance. Um, I'd really recommend going to YouTube and, well, I guess since you're already on YouTube, I'd recommend looking up this Huntington's dance at the very end. Just write it down and, you know, spend 30 seconds out of your day to just see what this prototypical dance is. It's because you're losing inhibiting striatal nuclei. Man, spelling is struggling this morning. I'm not even going to finish it. You're going to have caudate degradation so your mind cannot inhibit your movements. That is 
the very key part of Huntington's. All right, so again, I would remember two things. I'd remember anticipation, I'd remember CAG repeat. Those are the most important things on the slide. We'll wrap up our discussion with myotonic, myotonic dystrophy. Okay, so myotonic dystrophy, we've talked about the CGG, trinucleotide repeat. Now, remember which one that was? That was fragile X. Good. Next, we've got GA. When you think GA, it's your frat brother, so it's going to be your Friedrichs. Then you finally have your CAG repeat, that's going to be your Huntington's. Myotonic dystrophy, however, on the other hand, is going to be a CTG. Now, there's really no good way to remember these. Um, I know a lot of books try and give you this long, extended way to remember it. Really, there's four disorders. I already gave you Friedrichs, which is going to be your GAA, your GA. So then it leaves three. Hopefully by now, you're, you're able to remember three different things. So this is going to be your CTG repeat. Now what's going to be affected? It's going to be your MDPK gene that's affected. Okay, so your MDPK gene. Uh, again, this is going to be an autosomal dominant disorder. Autosomal dominant meaning you need only one mutated or affected allele. So what are some of the hallmarks? You know, I would remember CTG, and I'd also remember the presenting symptoms, because myotonic dystrophy is going to have a very unique symptom. I've seen this asked in a different set of ways. Really, it's going to be grip problems. When you see grip problems, so I'm saying, uh, you notice a patient that comes in, shakes your hand, and as they shake your hand, their grip is very slow to release. They hold on to your hand, and you can tell that they're trying to release, but their grip is maintained for an abnormally long period. That is going to be one way it could be presented. It could also be presented with you're holding your patient's hand, testing their, their grip, testing their thenar eminence. The thenar eminence is your thumb muscle kind of mass right there. And as you, as you tap your reflex hammer on their thenar eminence, it's going to contract. So your thenar eminence is going to contract. Your thumb is brought into your hand, into your palm. And it's going to stay like that for a while. And eventually it'll release, but it'll contract and it'll stay contracted. Those are the two main ways that I've seen this presented as. It's either as a handshake grip problem or someone's... Uh, using tools and they have a really hard time releasing tools whether it be a pen or a hammer or, or else you're in the office testing their thenar eminence and it's a prolonged contraction that is going to indicate myotonic dystrophy so again two main things from this slide we have the CTG repeat and we have grip problems now if I said CAG in anticipation you're thinking Huntington's I'm talking Friedrichs, you're saying like ataxia, falling, frataxin gene, not as important, and then it's the GAA. And then lastly, for fragile X, we're talking the CGG, and we're also going to be talking X-linked dominant. Those are the main points. All right, hopefully you found this video useful. Um, CAG, big one. I already emphasized it there. These are the four disorders, the four main disorders that you really should know for boards or for any test. A trinucleotide repeat is just going to be a, a code, a triplet that gets repeated over and over and over. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Uh, I always enjoy hearing your comments, so please leave a comment. And please like if you found this video useful or if you learned anything. Uh, otherwise, thank you for paying attention and subscribe for more great videos. Thanks.